There were no news reporters chasing me down, chasing down my neighbors, standing outside the hospital, people asking me to be hung on social media. There was simply silence. Welcome to the Licensed to Live show, where professionals, doctors, champions, VIPs, attorneys, and those in public office discover strategies that help you restart and gain what is lost when you find yourself accused. If another has doubted your integrity, questioned your credentials, or caused your actions to come under scrutiny, you are in the right place. On the other hand, if you have never felt the knot in the pit of your stomach when legal papers are served, the heartbreak of disappointing your family when the lock clicks shut on handcuffs, or had to appear before a board of review, then be aware, the longer you serve, the more likely you are to find yourself under the microscope of those who judge. Prepare yourself for this uncomfortable possibility. Now, here's your host, Dr. Jarrett Patton. In a flash, it is gone. All the hard work, all the effort, all the dedication, it's gone. Welcome to this episode of License to Live. My name is Dr. Jared, and I am your host for our journey together today and every day you choose to listen to this show. If you or anyone you know has been dissed by the healthcare system, please invite them to join us along this journey. Just go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe to the License to Live show. While you are there, please rate this episode and give me honest feedback so I can make sure I provide you with the most up-to-date information about career and life changes. When I say dissed, I mean disengaged, like and this medicine thing is not what it's cracked up to be. Too much paperwork, too many administrators telling me what to do, or I don't have enough time with my patients. Dissatisfied, like, I just don't feel like I'm living up to my full potential. This career simply isn't fulfilling. Disgruntled, like, being a doctor has taken too much of my life away. I am in debt up to my eyeballs, and I am upset because my work life is too full and my real life is left barren or disenfranchised, like I was when I had my medical license temporarily suspended. This show is not for those physicians who are happy and fulfilled in their clinical career or have never met a setback in life. If you're in this category, you should tell a friend to listen to this podcast. Today, we'll be talking about accusations and how quickly they can affect your career and how it doesn't have to take a lifetime to recover from them. Recently, we heard about a Yale surgeon. Two years ago, he was accused of lying to his patient to cover up a wrong site surgery. Well, for the court of public opinion, that's all they needed to hear. He was sentenced and convicted in this court, only to have an attorney recant his statement about the physician lying nearly two years later. These actions can be taken upon someone without having all the facts straight. The problem with this is for this unfortunate doctor is that the damage is already done. In a flash, his reputation was ruined. This case is just another example of the stories I hear from people across the country who have been ruined before they even had a chance to defend themselves. Every time I hear a story like this, I get chills. Oh, no, not another test. Many of my listeners know that I was another victim. I suddenly had a 12-year tenure with a senior physician executive position erased like I never existed. My portrait that proudly hung on the hospital wall was removed practically before I could even leave the hospital. All of the hard work, all of the effort, all of the care, all of the alignment, all of the loyalty meant nothing. It came down to an accusation, and in the hospital's mind, it seemed too risky to keep me around. There I went, dejected, embarrassed harassed, and perhaps ridiculed by that same court of public opinion that had given me the death sentence when the news story broke in Philadelphia and most of the East Coast. Months and months after my case was slowly rolling through the criminal justice system, the medical board was working in parallel and came to a decision. The medical board, although my license was suspended for, quote, being a danger to the public, ultimately did their research and investigation and found that I was not a threat and was given my license back fully restored and unrestricted. However, it didn't come with an apology or a written statement on my behalf that my license was reinstated. 
it didn't matter because the damage was done anyway. Final judgment. The criminal justice system worked even slower. And even though it wanted to bail out on me and get rid of the case, I wasn't going to back down like many people do. In fact, I was fully prepared to finally get to say something in a court of law, even though I was being treated guilty until I could prove myself innocent. Finally, I did have my day in court where the jury could see what I saw all along. Innocence. It didn't matter. The damage was done nearly a year and a half previously. Furthermore, I didn't have the fanfare of media reports and national media exclaiming my exoneration. In fact, leaving those courtroom steps, there was only one newspaper reporter who took a statement from me. She had attended many of my hearings and probably knew the outcome as well. Unlike when this story broke, there were no news reporters chasing me down, chasing down my neighbors, standing outside the hospital, people asking me to be hung on social media. There was simply silence. Accusations are very dangerous to our profession as physicians or other professionals in the public eye. These accusations, especially as a public figure, can be damaging and destroy a career, a person, or even a life in some cases. We spend so much time working to perfect our craft as a physician, we tend to forget that there's a myriad of other things that came before the title that have much more importance. Husband, father, son, brother, cousin, grandson, nephew, friend, just to name a few. When your title gets strips away, it feels like a piece of you also goes away. As personal as these attacks are, you must get beyond the personal feeling because to everyone else, it's just business. Policemen, board of medicine trustees, hospital administrators, employees, prosecutors, attorneys, and the rest of the cast of characters takes this simply as business. That is why it seems that everyone turns against you in a situation like this. You must stay strong and keep up the fight so that you can play the game that everyone else is playing. In fact, during these times, you need your support system more than ever. You need a team of people at your side. It could be your friends and family. It could be a lawyer who has your best interests at heart. It could be a confidant or a coach that can help navigate the difficult journey. Now, most people think that it takes a lifetime to recover from this type of assault. I've given many strategies in my book entitled License to Live, a primer to rebuilding your life after your career is shattered. It's available on Amazon or barnesandnoble.com. However, rebuilding your credibility is important. Depending on your situation, your digital footprint can be scary. After all, large corporations and news companies have their way with getting their story out there. You have to take some time to get your story out there as well. With time, the corporations will forget about you. The stories will fade. You will make your new story. It is time to make something bigger and better than before. It can start with a few simple things to get you on your way. Perhaps you will work on positive stories and media outlets. It may seem ironic, but you may work with the same industry that tried to destroy you. Remember, it is business, not personal. Perhaps you will grow your social media presence. It does take a lot of courage to face the trolls out there, but they don't know you. You know yourself. Besides, if you don't have any haters, then you're probably not doing much anyway. You may even want to write a book about it. Licensed to live. This leads to the new version of you, the better you. Own your own story. Although this could be a defining moment in your life and career, this moment will not define you. Make your own definition. Own your story while creating a new story. Embrace it. This negative story can't simply be erased. It's a part of your life. However, it does not define your life. You'll be able to move on quicker than you think. When you accept that bad things happen to innocent people, you take growth as the positive side effect. You refuse to let the negative take you out. This happens time and time again to people. You do have a choice. You can let it ruin you, or you can use it as a catalyst to get you to a better place. Do not feel defeated. Take the time to recharge yourself. Take the time to savor this moment. Although it may be very painful, the best of you is yet to come. And when you commit to rebuilding your credibility, you commit to progress. When you commit to progress, you commit to action. When you take action, you are moving. You are rebuilding. You are growing into the new you. Your job licenses and certifications may come and go, but remember, 
you are licensed to live. Remember, Firestarters, if you or anyone you know has been dissed, disengaged, dissatisfied, disgruntled, or disenfranchised with health care, please invite them to join us along this journey. Simply go to Apple Podcasts and subscribe to the License to Live show. And while you're there, please rate this episode and give me honest feedback so I make sure that I provide you with the most up-to-date information about career challenges and life changes. See you next time. No matter how disheartening the moment of accusation sounds, how deep the pain of immobilization stabs, or how bleak your future looks, no one can take away your license to live. Keep Dr. Jarrett's expertise handy and unlock your future. Go to Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, or another podcast player and subscribe right now to Licensed to Live. See you next time.